أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المزمل قم الليل إلا قليلا نصفه أو انقص منه قليلا أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا صدق الله العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear viewers and welcome to another episode of Tajweed or learning of Tajweed of Al-Qur'an Al-Hakim. We have reached so far in the count of going backwards from Surah Al-Nas. We have reached Surah Al-Masad. So inshallah we'll start this lesson today by reading Surah Al-Masad and then explaining as usual some of the ahkam. Uh, before we do this, we would like to mention uh, two things that were mentioned in the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them. Uh, one of which a companion of Abi Abdullah alayhi salatu wasalam, peace and blessings be upon him, uh, comes and asks the Imam, he says, I have memorized the Qur'an or I have memorized parts of the Qur'an, so shall I just be reading from my memory or shall I be reading from the Qur'an? Or I think he just says, is, is it okay to just carry on reciting rather from memory? Is that uh, okay to do? Uh, the Imam والسلام, answers him, peace and blessings be upon him. He answers him, he says, it's rather it is preferred that you look at the text of the Qur'an as you are reading, even if you have memorized as you have seen from the beginning, even when we're reading Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Ikhlas, obviously these are surah that everyone should, have, should memorize and must memorize in order to do or perform salah. Uh, but rather we choose to actually read from the Mus'haf because Al-Imam والسلام, says actually just looking at the text or at the verses of Qur'an is ibadah, this is an act of worship. And also there, there are various different reasons that may come to mind already of why this is a good thing to do. You know, one of which would be if there are any mistakes in the recitation, you would be made aware of them because you're, uh, you're actually reading from the original text, not from memory, which, you know, mistakes can accumulate over time. And you may get used to this thinking that this is the right way to recite and others may actually learn from you also. A typical example of this is in Surah Al-Ikhlas when you hear things like وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُؤًا أَحَد or وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُؤًا أَحَد and they are used to saying it in this manner and uh, you know when, when they are to teach someone or when they are to recite they will always say it in this way. Uh, if they had picked up the Qur'an, as I'm sure not a lot of people actually do, you know, which is a shame. And a lot of people don't actually pick up the Qur'an and read Surah Al-Ikhlas. How many of us actually do this? Because we memorize it, we feel no need to go back to the text. 
but you would, you know, realize quite a few things. One of which being this, if you look in detail at the harakat, you will see kufuwan. So there's no other way to read it. Alhamdulillah, there are harakat on the masahib, so a mistake should not be made if you give enough attention. Also, the harakat at the end of the surah, which we pointed out the importance of this as well. Uh, when a reciter is reading without stop, which is the case for most reciters, unfortunately, or most Muslims, let's say, when they are reciting the Qur'an during Salah. So they would read without stopping, but they would not take the ahkam, uh, you know, the rules of reading without stopping. You must do the harakat at the end of the um, ayat, as we have already mentioned. So this is one thing. The other thing is... Uh, one person came to Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, peace and blessings be upon him. And he asked him, what is the meaning of tartila, this verse that you keep hearing us recite at the start of the shows. And he said the meaning of this is to not read in a manner as if, and uh, I can't remember the exact uh, words of the narration, but it's something like, do not uh, throw it or do not, um, do not disperse it as the sand disperses, or there's something along these lines. Uh, in a way to say that do not read it in a fast manner. Give every letter its right. The letters where you should pr prolong, do prolong them. The letters that should be pronounced in a certain way, you know, it's thabit, it's uh, um, agreed upon that it must be pronounced in this certain way, so do pronounce it in this way. For example, there are, th when, when I say this, you know, some people may ask, what do you mean that it's agreed upon? Are there letters or are there ahkam that are not agreed upon? There are s certain ahkam that, you know, there is a, a difference of opinion, let's say. And inshallah, we will come to this later on if we have time and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. We will explain this inshallah, God willing. So... Inshallah, we'll recite Surah Al-Masad Al-An now, and we will give a, an explanation as usual, Inshallah, of some of the ahkam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahmani ar-Rahim. تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد صدق الله العلي العظيم There are a few أحكام here that are quite important and probably some of which haven't been mentioned. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab. Now, tabbat, some people give, because they feel the letter is not heard properly, so they give a qalqala, they give like a bounce or a vibration uh, to the letter ta, which should not be given. As we explained, the letters of qalqala are qutub jad. So this is none of which. So they say, yada, which is incorrect. You don't need to make so much emphasis on the ta. Just the fact that you say it is enough and it can be heard. Yada, not tabbat. There's no bounce on that letter. This is often made. Yada abi wa tab. The med on yada does not need to be explained at this stage. It's clear that it has a med from the color. If you have the mushaf with the colors, it will be red. Uh, and also, you know, it has the sign of med, the, let's call it the wave on top of the alif. Abi lahabin wa tab. Okay, this, but now some people say every qalqala is the same. 
this is where you know some of the uh, opinions differ and some uh, say that no not every qalqala is the same there's qalqala sughra wa qalqala kubra now that means there's the uh, you know the normal let's say or the little qalqala and there's the large qalqala or the strong the weak qalqala and the strong one let's call it the weak bounce and the strong bounce for example now the weak one would be the normal one for example qul huwa allahu ahad the normal one tabbat yada abi lahab wa tab you notice the difference is a lot stronger if we say wa tab wa tab that's it this is a normal qalqala if we say wa tab it's a lot stronger now the reason for this is that there is shadd on top of the ba therefore there is a shadda and there's also a sukun when you stop in the you know presuming that you stop at, at the end of the ayah now there's a sukun because you have stopped so it's one of the letters of qalqala qutub harf al ba so you must do qalqala and some reciters say do it which in my opinion is is uh, correct inshallah it's more so correct and it gives the recitation uh, a better let's say it gives a better uh, uh, a more complete meaning and it also gives the listener an idea of uh, has this letter got a shadda or not whereas if you just recite it in a normal manner the listener would not be able to tell if, if the qalqala has a shadda or not so it's good to mention that this uh, letter has a shadda by showing that in the way that you do the qalqala so abi lahab wa tab Okay. ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب. Okay. Now you have ما أغنى. Notice the when you have تفخيم and ترقيق. If you notice حرف ال الغين here will have a dark blue color, which we said is quite hard to differentiate because it's very near to the black shade. So ما أغنى. So again, we said when you have tafkhim and tarqiq um, in one word or in the same word, it becomes quite difficult to pronounce. Ma na. Notice the difference. If you were to say the ghain just like the rest of the letters, it would become ma aghna. Notice aghna incorrect. Aghna correct. Inshallah. ما أغنى عنه ماله it's not ماله ماله the small wow is there it's exactly the same as the normal wow we can't say ماله ماله so prolong it for two uh, two harakat which is one second وما كسب notice كسب is a normal قلقلة كسب not كسب كسب so you 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 can differentiate Whereas if someone would say kasab, you would think that there's uh, a shadd, almost as if someone saying kasab, uh, in the meaning of uh, like insulting kasab, kasab bi fulan, for example. Inshallah, this is clear. So even sometimes the meaning can actually change. Sayas la again. This is in the same instance. Sayas la, same as aghna. Notice, saya is muraqqaq, uh, normal as most letters are. Sayas, not sayas la, sayas la. Notice, even you'll notice this movement uh, over time, inshallah, and you'll notice the difference between harf uh, that is muraqqaq and harf that is mufakham. This is very difficult at the start, this is why we keep mentioning it. سيصل نارا not نارا نارا again مفخم حرف الراء again notice it's in dark blue سيصل نارا ذات لهب نارا ذات notice the difference in the إخفاء as well so you have نارا you don't pronounce the noon you don't say رن with the noon no there's إخفاء with the following letter عرف الذال، so you would say نارا ذات لهب، 
you get ready for Harf al-Dal. سَيَصْلَى نَارًا ذَاتَ لَهَبٍ وَامْرَأَتُهُ حَمَّالَةَ الْحَطَبٍ This is, inshallah, easy. فِي جِيدِهَا حَبْلٌ مِّن مَّسَدٍ Now, the قَلْقَ on حَبْلٌ is in the middle of the, uh, of the word. So it doesn't have شَدَّ um, and it's a normal qalqala. Habilum mim asad. So inshallah this surah, it's, you know, it's, it has some ahkam which are quite difficult to grasp. But in general, inshallah, it's an easy one. I don't think we have time to explain uh, the next surah. So inshallah in this episode, we will... Uh, Inshallah, the episode will be satisfied with just one surah, and we'll continue in the following episodes. هذا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon the Messenger and his pure progeny, and may Allah's damnation be upon the enemies of the Prophet and his pure progeny. Peace and blessings be upon them. And may Allah make us of those who benefit from the knowledge of the Qur'an and from the Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, whom the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his progeny, has said, shall never be separated, the Qur'an and my pure progeny. هذا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين.